place to entertain you With music and laughter to help you on your way To raising the rafters with a hey, hey, hey With songs and sketches and jokes old and new With us about you and Bill Blue So meet the gang cause the boys are here The boys to entertain you B-O-B-O-Y-S, boys, to entertain you! Hope you're not taking too much luggage, Ashford. We've only got one jeep calling for us, you know. It's so difficult to decide what to leave behind when you've gone, Lee. Don't you find that? Yeah, just think. Ten whole days away from this stinking, steaming jungle. What sort of things will we do at the Hill Station? I mean, uh, is it like Matlock? No, not really. Well, we wear civvies, of course. Well, they do that in Matlock. <laughs> It'll probably be afternoon teas, cocktail parties, maybe even a dance. la di da 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 Do you think, uh, do you think there'll be any girls? Well, there better be. I'm not dancing with you. <laughs> oh, that reminds me, I haven't packed my white dinner jacket. I hope the sergeant made is not late with his jeep. We well, promised to be here at five. And we're not due at the railhead till about eight, are we? I think the sergeant major is awfully efficient and all that. Hasn't it been nice not to have him for a couple of days? Hmm. Oh, dear. It's in a bit of a state, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Needs a bit of a going over with the iron, I think. Not to mention a bucket of whitewash. <laughs> it's not funny, Ashwood. Uh, Punkawalla, do you think the Dobie Wallow could do something about this? Sir, Dobie Wallow, what do you do? You do Give it to charity. <laughs> Gloria, what did you do that for? Because I'm bored. Bored, bored, bored! We've not done a show for two weeks. None of you got any talent. And him, him, he just sits there and never says a word. That's good. It's not polite to speak with your mouth. <laughs> Somebody is up. Clean Toby is here for the picking up. That's it. That is the most exciting thing that's happened all day. I loan this comeback. <laughs> what time's the next tortoise race? The 2.30. <laughs> and Greta Garbo here is two to one. She was even money last time. What happened? Ah, she's been noble, poor soul. Somebody fed her a saucer of the charwala's tea. I haven't seen a woman for 108 days. <laughs> Six hours and 35 minutes. Why don't you all read a book? It's not the same, is it? <laughs> Do you know, I don't get on much with books. Well, they're difficult sometimes, aren't they? Well, unless they've got pictures, like. This one isn't difficult. Mutiny on the Bounty. A brutish and tyrannical master, a crew, pressed into service from the gutters of Deptford. You'd find it entirely relevant to our situation with old Shutter. I didn't they come from near Deptford gutter, Petal. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on, it's time for the 2.30 tortoise race. Right, yeah. Then we'd better get cleared up or the Sergeant Major will do his nut. He's not due back for another two and a half hours. <laughs> I'm going to have a bit of a kip. Mind the race course. Right. Greta Garbo's two to one. Betty Grable and Shirley Temple are even money. Place your bets. Greta right. Garbo. Betty, Betty, Betty Grable. Right. Betty Grable. They're under starters orders and they're off. Come on, Greta. Come on, Greta. Get on there, Greta. Come on, 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 Greta. Give the next race a myth. I'm trying to have a kip. You. <laughs> Come here. What the hell do you think you were doing? He was on active service. There's nobody on guard, nobody on patrol, nobody on fire picket. He was asleep. And this place is a shambles. Get off the rain! Move his hand, move his hand! Oh, you! Oh, oh, oh. Stop, 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 you will not be coming back, sir, I'm sorry to say. There's a big push on all movement has been frozen. Frozen? What do you mean, frozen? We're going on leave. That is not possible, sir. Do you mean to say our leave has been cancelled? 
Not cancelled, sir. You just cannot go on it, so to speak. <laughs> That's a beastly thing to do. I was so looking forward to it. But can't you do something, sir? I mean, can't you ring up HQ and tell them to stick it? No, steady on it. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. I'm just... I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> Still, so I see what happens when I leave you for just a few hours. Colonel Graham, you look like an oldie man what's been stood on his head for a week on sandpaper. <laughs> Colonel Clark, sir. Do you know what you look like? No, sir. You look like a cleaner in a Dago knocking shop. <laughs> What do you look like? A cleaner in a Dago knocking shop, sir. <laughs> and you look like the chucker out in a Dago knocking shop. <laughs> and you, one of the customers. <laughs> and you, an horrible little garden gnome from the back end of Cardiff. <laughs> And the Parkins, even you, has not shaved. You, of all people, had to take bets on it. Why did you not make that good soldier shave? Well, th I front! <laughs> oh, I see my mistake now. I has been too soft with you. I has let my head rule my heart. Oh, yes, I has molly coddled you, but that is all over now. I is going to turn you into soldiers. Now, when you get the order to fall out, you will lay out your kits for inspection, and they better be 100% inarticulate or else. Fall out! <laughs> Oh. The men is in a disgusting state, so with your permission, I shall give them an intensive course on soldiering and discipline. Uh, you can do what you like, Sergeant Major. From now on, you're in complete charge. Captain Ashford and I have decided to make the best of it, and we're going to take our leave here. Yes, sort of holidays at home. <laughs> as far as I am concerned, the army ends here. I'm going to have a screen put up, and anything on that side has nothing to do with us at all. You can ignore us. We're just not here. We're on leave, just as it would be up in the hills. Well, that suits me a fair treat, sir, because I shall have drill parades, arms parades, PT parades, double guards, double pickets, jungle training, live exercises, and in ten days, they will be soldiers. No, no, sir. Ten days, they will not be spies, but very tough poofs. There's one other consternation, sir. No one will see your green and white dinner jacket. <laughs> Sweet little Alice oh, Blue oh, Gown. Oh, 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 we are la. Right, we are la. You want to watch? <laughs> you want to watch you don't get sunburned, Ashford? Well, I want something to share for my holidays. <laughs> Do you have any sun oil? No, I'm sorry, I haven't. Oh, I've got some solid brilliant in. <laughs> That'll do. It's gone a bit sort of runny in the heat. And it's green. <laughs> <laughs> Use nice bit of drippings. Right time! Oh, the eyes! One, two, three, one, two, three, away! Stand that ice! What's the matter with you? You've already had two days, you've got another eight to go. Stand still! <laughs> hey, Sergeant Major, may we have a drink of water? No, you may not have a drink of water. You're half a cup two hours ago. You're making pigs of yourselves. <laughs> I'm totally dehydrated, Sergeant Major. Oh, totally deprivated. <laughs> no, you're not! You only think you is. What you need is self-control and discipline. I will teach you self-control and discipline. Jawala! Empiada, jolly, jolly! Now! You see this chatty? It's full of clear, cool, sparkling water. <laughs> Thank you. Now get back and sit by that stinking, dirty char room. <laughs> no! Major Sergeant Major Slav. Shut up. Now watch this, boys. Look at that. Cool, clear, oh. gurgling water. <laughs> right, you will now show your self-control and discipline. Stand still! <laughs> You'd like some of that, wouldn't you? Uh, wouldn't you? Yes. Something to cool your parched throats? Oh, yes. Just to wet those cracked lips. 
but he's not having any. <laughs> Stand still! Leave him where he is! You're not human, you're a monster! You're torturous! You're cruel and sadistic! You're a beast! I'm gonna have water! I'm dying of thirst! <laughs> Over a bit fuzzy. Have I missed anything? <laughs> Shut up! Self control lesson number two. Get your pianos out. Hold them out. Right. You will not drink till I give the order. One drop. <laughs> One drop. <laughs> One drop. <laughs> worse off, but you could be a damn sight worse off again. Oh, yes. You think... <laughs> you think I am statistic? <laughs> well, he was right, I am. Stand on one leg! Stand on one leg, go on! Stand on one leg! Stand still. Get them knees up sagging under your chin. First man to put his leg down on a charge. Stand still! Legs down. <laughs> right, stand still. I was going to give you a rest. You've earned one five minutes. And then you will be back on parade for PT. Move yourself! Let's get it on. <laughs> Are you all right, Lofty? Yes, I'm all right now. I just felt all swimmy. When we were running in the jungle, I think a little insect bit me through my sock. Uh, <laughs> you must have a hell of a digestion. <laughs> Did you ever see anything like that exhibition? The man's totally deranged. Uh, the next time he looks at my rifle, I'm going to have one up the spout, and I'm going to pull the trigger, and that's a promise. Shooting's too good for him. He wants burying up to his neck in an ant's nest. <laughs> it's your own fault, Sergeant Major. I wouldn't help you. You've been so beastly to us. I'm gonna keep standing in your face. Yeah, <laughs> Laurie, calm down, calm down, calm down. Now, legally speaking, chaps, our only redress is to speak to the officers. They never listen. They all stick together. Yeah, who do all the talking anyway? Yeah, whoever does the talking will be blamed for being a ringleader. Yes, but if we all wrote a petition and then we all signed it, then they'd have to take notice of it. That's it, we get it. Well, come on. We must die. I'll go mad. I'm, I'm sensitive to atmosphere, you know. Sirs, we respectfully beg... No, no, we humbly beg. You have to be humble to officers and, and you sign it, your humble servant. All right. Sirs, we humbly beg to draw your attention to the fact that... that... we are being maltreated and subjected to inhuman suffering. E.g. not allowing us to drink. And doubling us till we're knackered. <laughs> <laughs> and doubling us beyond the point of exhaustion. Not that we have anything against Sergeant Major Williams. But his behaviour is tantamount to megalomania. And it is our opinion that his mental balance is disturbed. Right. Come on, then. We've all got to sign it. There you are. And then all we have to do is to deliver it. Oh, uh, bags not do that. Oh, that's all right. Lofty will do that, won't you, Lofty? Why me? Because you are little and you won't be noticed. <laughs> I'm little this way, but I'm not little that way. <laughs> Come on, Lofty, sign it. Right. There you are. Now, it'll only take you a second. Off you go. Here, Lofty. Just wander over aimlessly as if you're going for an afternoon stroll. In Burma, in the jungle. <laughs> Get on with it. Go on. Go on. <laughs> I've got 
got a lovely bunch of coconuts. <laughs> big ones, small ones, some as big as your head. I give... Sergeant. Come here. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm aimlessly going for an afternoon stroll. <laughs> In Burma, in the jungle. What's on your hand? It's a little note. Give it to me. It's for the officers. There's on leave. No, they're not. They're sitting in the sun on the bums. <laughs> I will see they get it on their return. Look, he's given him the note. We'll all get home. How dare you send those to officers without my permission? Get up, Brad! Move his hand, move his hand! He's already waiting! You should be there by now! No problem, he's moved his hand! Go on, time! Turn the dice! What's this? Uh, it's, a, it's a petition, Sergeant Major. Oh, it's a petition? <laughs> <laughs> it was meant for the officers. Then I will read it on their behalf. <laughs> We humbly beg. Who oh, is humble now, is we? <laughs> Inhuman suffering. This is breaking my heart. Can't amount to meg megalom <laughs> megalonumonia. <laughs> and it is our opinion that his mental balance. Is disturbed. <laughs> Signed Bombardier Beaumont, Gunner Graham, Gunner Macintosh, Gunner Clark, Gunner Evans, Gunner Sugden, Gunner Parkins. <laughs> what does this mean? You've exceeded your authority. <laughs> oh dear. How sad, never mind. <laughs> you know what this is, don't you? Mutiny. You're that. Mutiny. Now, does anybody want to cross his name off this bit of paper? <laughs> One last chance. Well, yes, Too late. <laughs> <laughs> now, does you know what we can do with mutineers on active service? For a start, we can flog them. We haven't flogged anyone in the British Army for over a hundred years. Well, it's time we started. <laughs> now, this is what I think of your petition. And this is what we is going to do with it. Have a bit. Go on. <laughs> Megalopneumonia. <laughs> That must be you a bit. <laughs> no. Eat. <laughs> Go on, eat your own words. <laughs> Good quality paper. <laughs> It's your turn on stag. All right. What's for dinner, Mohammed? Soya lynx, sub. Soya lynx sausages? <laughs> They're not fit for our cat. <laughs> we gave them to our cat. Now we haven't got a cat. <laughs> Sorry, sub. Sergeant Major Sub said that's all you can have for seven days. Here, Lofty. What's up? I don't know. I feel all shivery and light headed. Oh, you don't look so clever from what I can see of your son. And Sergeant Major came and took our lamps away. He said one lamp's enough for mutineers. He's in the advanced stages of acute paranoia, just like Captain Bly in Mutiny on the Bounty. But I saw that film. Charles Lawton, Clark Gable. Yeah, but this is the real true story. Do you know, he actually cut their water ration so he could water his breadfruit plants. You listen to this. <coughs> Things came to a head when we were 12 months out from home. Tahiti lay 20 days to the east, and we were on the northwest course, making sluggish progress towards the perils of the Endeavour Straits. 
Bly was in a state bordering on paranoia, suspecting that someone had been thieving from his pile of coconuts. He vented his spleen on officers and men alike. Mr. Christian! Mr. Christian! Yeah, Captain? Damn your blood, Mr. Christian! You've stolen me coconuts! <laughs> I had a lovely bunch. There were big ones, small ones, some as big as your head, and that's saying something, Mr. Lardy Dar Christian. I never laid a hand on your nuts, Captain. <laughs> You're a liar as well as a thief. You call yourself Clark Gable, Mr. Christian. You look more like Betty Grable. <laughs> get the crew mustard. There's no point in getting the mustard, Captain. They ain't got nothing to put it on. What are you talking about, you cowardly rascal? They've had no rations. They've had petitions, Mr. Christian. I fed them myself. <laughs> get mustard! <laughs> Despite his rank, Bly was a crude and oafish fellow. <laughs> Fletcher Christian, the young, sensitive lieutenant, was clearly at the end of his tether. The sullen crew were a mismatched assortment pressed into service from the gutters of Deptford. It was William Peckover, gunner. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew Quintle and Isaac Martin, seamen, desperate characters who had been flogged by Bly. Charles Churchill and Will Mackay. Bob Tinkler, powder monkey. <laughs> Muspratt and Skinner, sea salts from the West Country. Hey, I'm me. Devon, glorious day. <laughs> Discontent was rife among the crew. I'm fair fed up with a grub. That's for a grubs. <laughs> How about you, powder monkey? I'm fed up with powdery monkeys. <laughs> that man is insolent. Give him two dozen lashes. Thank you for the scuppers and time for the rigging. Commence the punishment, Mr. Christian. Okay, let the dreaded cat out of the bag. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Christian, that man has a fine pair of shoulders. Tell him to hold them back. <laughs> What's that sewer rat of a seaman doing? I be testing the thongs, Captain. And they're not fit for our cat. <laughs> <laughs> Lay on, person. Human punishment, Captain. That poor wretch's back is dripping with dripping. <laughs> then put some salt on it. Couldn't have a bit of chutney. Maiden from Tahiti. <laughs> I'm interested in this handsome white cargo. My name is Wantaleo. <laughs> Bring that Tahitian maiden here, Mr. Christian. She can help me to water me breadfruit trees. You shouldn't leave your breadfruit in the sun, it'll get toasted. <laughs> Look at that, my lovely boys. Cool, clear. Gurgling water. But the crew were dying of thirst, Captain. Is that so, Mr. Christian? Oh dear, how sad. Never mind. <laughs> the crew were in an ugly mood. In no time at all, mutiny was being whispered. Mutiny, mutiny, mutiny. Men were ripe for anything. They surprised Captain Bly in his cabin. What are you doing here? That's right. What are you doing here? Well, I came on deck to get a sighting. That's right. You knew you wasn't going to get one in there. <laughs> <laughs> you mooted us dogs. If you kill me, you'll all hang. We're not going to kill you. We're going to cast you adrift. Will we break out the long boat, the narrow boat, or the bum boat? 
You sailors have boats for everything. <laughs> Break out the longboat. <laughs> Beautiful, clean longboat already, Mr. Christian Saab, matey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in you get. I'm going with him. I know he's flogged me and starved me and keel hold me, but deep down he's got a good heart. <laughs> <laughs> Will nobody else help me? Awfully sorry, I'm on holiday. <laughs> So this is how you treat your old captain, is it, my lovely boys? You cast me adrift in an open doby basket 2,000 miles from land? This is mutiny, Mr Christian, mutiny! <laughs> but I live to see you hang from the highest yard arm in Her Majesty's Navy! <laughs> You'll never be a star. He's got no talent. <laughs> I'm starving, starving. I feel all giddy and swimmy. You'll be swimming all right if we don't sight land soon. <laughs> Give me some food. It's no good, Powder Monkey. You'll have to go hungry. We've just finished the last of our petitions. <laughs> what are we going to do? Well, we've still got each other, Powder Monkey Lad, so I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll toss you to see who eats who. <laughs> you lose. <laughs> It's the only thing to do. You've been bitten by a snake, Sugden. We've got to get the venom out as quickly as possible. I hope that doctor arrives soon. Here, fellas, I think this is him now. Now, just one more go, Sugden. I must get this poison out. Now, get a grip on yourself. <laughs> Sergeant Major, here's some iodine, if that's any help. Stop him, someone is putting chutney on me. <laughs> Let's have a look at him. Yes, that's a snake, all right. It's the third today. The sergeant may just suck the poison out of it, sir. Good. Just in time, by the look of it. Right. My chaps will get him onto the stretcher and we'll move him into the field hospital. You can walk, I suppose. Well, there's nothing wrong with me, sir. Oh, you'll have to be admitted, I'm afraid. You've had a deadly poison in your mouth. The slightest abrasion in the gums and you could be for it. We'll have to give you a few shots of serum. Pump you out a couple of times and keep you under observation. <laughs> How long for? Well, not more than seven days at the most. But these men, sir, I asked to train them. I've only had two days. Not a chance, Sergeant Major. There could be serious complications. But... I'll try and let you have him back somewhere about a, a week tomorrow. <laughs> well, I think we could resume our holiday, Ashford. You look after the men, won't you, Bobby dear? Yes, sir. I don't let them get too slack. Of course not, sir. Just give them some sort of training or something. And most important, I don't make too much noise, will you? No, sir. I promise you won't hear a whisper from us. Good show. Carry on, Bob, dear. Right, chaps. Back to your child, boys. Yes, hey. What time would you like the valley in the morning? Well, uh, <laughs> half past nine might be rather civilised. <laughs> Let's say ten o'clock, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Boys to entertain you! 